Casting crowns, lifting hands, going on is all we've come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, going on is all we've come to do. Casting crown, lifting hands, bowing hearts is all you come to do. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is all we come to do. I don't know. Adonai, Adonai, you reign on high. We will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on high.
Father, we give you thanks, we give you glory. We honor you, Jesus. We come in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, our Father. Precious Lord, we are grateful. Precious Lord, we are thankful. Precious Lord, we come in humble adoration. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the privilege of being called your sons and daughters. For the privilege of being called your sons and daughters. We come in the name of Jesus. We come by the blood of Jesus. We come by the blood of the everlasting covenant. We come by the blood of sanctification. We submit to the God of all flesh, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. We give you praise, we give you glory. Hallelujah to your name. Good evening, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome you to this broadcast this evening. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Thank you for being with us every single week and every single month since January, since 2019. It's been a pleasure to be in this meeting every single week and i trust that god will richly touch you through this broadcast and through this message in the name of jesus i'd like us to say a word of prayer and in a moment can you just begin to thank god begin to glorify his name for the privilege of being called his dear sons and also in that medium on that place of prayer can you begin to bring the nations of the earth to god in prayer the nations that are going through strife at this moment can we begin to pray you can pray about china and talk to god about that nation even as they go through this turmoil even as they go through this tough time that the lord will preserve them that the lord will heal them that the lord will bring healing upon the nation in the name of jesus father we present china before you Father, we prevent China before you and we ask, Lord, for healing over the nation of China and over every nation where the coronavirus might have begun to spread to. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask for healing. Lord, we ask for healing. Thank you for our lives. Thank God for the fact that you are alive today. It's not by power, nor by might. Let's also thank God for preserving even the nation of Ireland. We learnt about a few cases that were suspected at the airport, Dublin airport. And these are not just rare rumours, but it's also a possibility that through those cases, the spread could have happened. Let's thank the Lord that it did not escalate. Let's also present this city before God and pray for preservation. The Bible says, pray for the land where you dwell, because if the land dwells in peace, you will be in peace. Thank you, Lord, for the peace of Ireland, for the peace of this nation. We bring it before you and we ask for even greater peace. We ask for even greater glory to be seen in this land in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I want to appreciate God for everyone who tunes in every week at the time when they do um, every week we try our best to bring this broadcast at about 10 o'clock on Wednesdays and uh, we trust that in this time that God will meet you at the point of your need and will touch you in a way that will change your life forever in the name of Jesus I want to talk to us this evening. I'm led to speak to us about um, something that might not seem unfamiliar, but I trust that God will pass through His Word today to shed more light to it. 
Um, this broadcast is brought by Dominion City Dublin. Um, and we have a mandate to raise leaders that transform society. And I want to acknowledge the the global family and the worldwide family of Dominion City and everyone that has been a part of this vision and that has been part of God's move in the land. And I pray that his blessings will continue to overflow even as we continue to spread the gospel to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to speak about wisdom. Um, this year has been declared in Dominion City the year of obedience and in the year of obedience uh, the Bible says if you are willing and obedient you will eat the fruit of the land if you are willing and obedient you will eat the fruit of the land uh, there is also a book that we are reading this year Disciples Obey by Edward Gross that's the the one of the books that Dominion City is, you know, reading this year. If you have access to that book, if you are on Kindle or on um, Apple Books, you can get the book. It's called Disciples Obey and is written by Edward Gross. And in this year of obedience, one key thing to look at is wisdom. The, and I'll show us in scripture how God describes wisdom. And how it relates to obedience because sometimes people think that wisdom differs from obedience or that when someone is obedient or humble he is he doesn't know what he or she is doing but i'll show us in scripture today we're reading first corinthians 3 verse 18 and the bible says let no man deceive himself if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So the scripture is saying, if a man wants to be wise, he should first become a fool. <laughs> and you might wonder, why should he become a fool for him to be wise? Scripture says in verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death, or things present or things to come, all are yours and are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to point out the distinguishing part of this message, which is specifically in verse 18 and 19. And I'll read the message translation. The message translation puts it differently. It says, in the message translation, we see it in a different light. It says, don't fool yourself. Don't think that you can be wise merely by being up to date with the times. Be God's fool. That's the path to true wisdom. What the world calls smart, God calls stupid. It's written in scripture. He exposes the chicanery of the chick. The master sees through the smoke screens of the know-it-alls. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says that God exalts the humble and he brings down the proud. And this scripture is saying that if a man wants to be wise in the earth, he should be God's fool. So, do you rather be a wise man in the eyes of men or to be a fool in the eyes of men but a wise man before God? So, the scripture says that what the earth calls wise, God calls foolish. In some translations, they even say stupid. But it just means that the Bible says that the, eye, the, the, the way God sees things just as the earth is far from the heavens that's how far our thoughts are or how distant our thoughts are from God's thoughts so what God expects from us is totally different from what man expects from us you know in some, in some societies man expects you to be rich which is not bad man expects you to be wealthy or to have 
you know uh, 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 fashion sense which is not bad there are different expectations that man places on in the in the in, the, in dublin everybody wants to be in good shape so you see people walking out these are all means of accustoming to man's wisdom man's wisdom says if you jog every day you'll be healthy man's wisdom says if you walk uh, and, and make money you'll be rich <laughs> but scripture has some different scripture says about health it says that by his stripes we are healed that's like foolishness to a man scripture says that he sent forth his word and he healed them of their infirmities scripture says healing is the children's bread you know so these are different forms of wisdom as compared to man the word says you know like i talked about wealth god says that there is him that scattereth and yet gaineth much and there is him that concealeth and yet gaineth little so god in in his own terms of wealth says that the man that sows into that scatters his seed you know is the one that is wealthy whereas the world says that the one that saves his money is the one that is wealthy so there are two different opinions and that's why scripture says what god calls wise the earth calls stupid and what the earth calls wise god calls stupid but i'm talking about being god's fool in order to gain wisdom being God's fool is not losing your 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 own thinking. Being God's fool is thinking through the eyes of God. Uh, the Bible says, "If a man's way please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him." A man's way pleasing the Lord sometimes might mean his ways not pleasing man. Your way pleasing God might mean not pleasing the societal con- conditions that you are, that are placed on you. But it means pleasing the one who created you. I would say that Meshach and Abednego say we would rather die in that den of lions or in that lake of fire than to bow before you, Nebuchadnezzar. And what did God? What happened? A fourth man in the fire came. Now, no matter how much they bowed to Nebuchadnezzar, he could never have rescued them from a fire. So you see that the things that you fear in this world are nothing compared to the wrath. For which God can deliver you from. The things that you fear in this world are nothing compared to what God can do to you or for you if you you know, follow him or if you are obedient to his will. I'm talking about a man understanding what is required of him by God and following that assignment and following that will and living his life daily to please God. A life that is lived daily to please God will turn out to be a wise life, a wise a life that is spent wisely, a life that is really daily to please God might seem foolish. Oh, what are you doing? What is what what do you think you are doing? Why are you wasting your life? Those are the ways you the things you hear when you feel you are not conforming to the wisdom of man. But when God says something is foolish, you should listen because He made wisdom. He made us. He made everything in the earth. And when he says that this thing he made is wise or foolish, you we should listen. So what is expected in this year of obedience in order to gain wisdom? Number one is sticking to the word of God. The word of God is the first source of wisdom. And that's why we are encouraged to study our Bibles daily. That's why we are encouraged to stick to the word every day of our life. That's why we are encouraged to be to be not just readers of the word but doers of the word the bible has been given to us as the number one book of wisdom that is the number one source of wisdom that god has placed it is his will and his mind and his thoughts dropped to us in letters you know so the word of god is god's primary way of sharing his wisdom with us you know in in the word of god you have wisdom for every sphere of life there is wisdom for finances there's wisdom for relationship. There's wisdom for marriage. There's wisdom for ministry. There's wisdom for career. There's wisdom for parenting. There's wisdom for family. There's wisdom for any everything that you can think about. Is in the word. It is in the word. You know, I I was listening to 
a man of God to the Reverend David Ibiomi, and he was say, Pastor David Ibiomi, and he was saying that if this, if someone says the key to 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 prosperity is sowing, yes, it is good. But if you sow without a knowledge of the word, then you have left the number, the primary seed. The first seed of prosperity is the word of God. The word of God has ideas for business. The word of God has ideas for, for finances. If you leave the first source of wisdom and go over the second, then you lose the primary thing, the foundation. So the foundation upon which God places every other thing is his word. He says he honors his word above his name. And if he, if God says it, he, you know that he cannot lie. He says, I am not a man that I should lie. So the word of God should be our primary. Before I, before I do any major thing in my life, I should expect to know what God says about this thing. Before I take a step in my life. You know why? Because man's thoughts can be inconsistent. Man's ways can be unstable. But the word of God is stable. So you want to rule your life by a word that is stable. You want to rule your life by a word that is constant, not by your thoughts that can change any time. And not just that it is constant, it is proven. Solomon asks, God, Solomon brought a thousand, a thousand cattle before God in sacrifice when he was dedicating the temple to God. And on that day, when the presence of God came down, God asked Solomon, what do you do that I do for you? And Solomon said, I want wisdom. I want wisdom. That's why I'm talking to us about wisdom today. Wisdom made Solomon the richest man on the earth. Wisdom made Solomon the greatest king at, in a season. The Bible says that the queen of Sheba came all the way to see about the wisdom of Solomon. And after she stayed with him, she said, what I heard is even little compared to what I have seen. Every single thing I was told, I have seen and even better that was her confession the wisdom of god is the primary you know I, I remember when i was about to start when i was about to come for my master's degree one of the passages that i read that made me know that god wanted me to do my master's degree was when i saw when i read about the wisdom for living and the wisdom for invention and i began to see that there is a wisdom of god for new ideas the kind of ideas that go beyond the, 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 the level of this world is in the is given by God. And the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of me. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, nor shadow of turning. You know, and I began to pray and say, Lord, give me wisdom, wisdom to do, to bring ideas. And that was my prayer all through. Lord, give me wisdom for new ideas. Wisdom for new ideas. Because a master's degree sometimes can, can be so challenging, can be so tough, that you begin to ask yourself, where am I even going from here? What, what, what is even the next stage? What am I to do at, at this point? But it is the wisdom of God that can open your mind to, I, to revelation, to things that you could not think about as a normal person, as a human being. You begin to think of wise of wise thought so and i began to see in scripture that it is that wisdom that he gave all the people who made remarkable inventions about einstein those were not human thinking the things that brought about physics the things that brought about chemistry it was the wisdom of god for invention it was the wisdom of god for invention and he gives it to people who want it and who ask for it and so i began to pray and say lord give me wisdom for new ideas give me wisdom because sometimes Everybody can be going in one direction, but the wisdom of God says change direction. If the wisdom of God says change direction, you might be seeming like a fool at that time. Oh boy, where did they go? Are you crazy? But by the time we get to the end of the journey, because we serve a God who knows the end from the beginning, He has seen ahead already and He knows where you are going to. He knows what is best for you and He will channel your life to the best. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. I remember when I was going to serving and I wanted to choose a PPA in Nigeria. I wanted to choose a primary place of assignment. And the Lord began to say, go to Lapai, and a community in that land. And I was like, what is, where is Lapai? You know? And I began to ask questions about the place. It came to a point that we were opportune to say, 
the, 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 the head of the camp said, which of you wants to come to the capital? The capital is supposed to be where everybody has access to better amenities and all that. And I said, no, I want to go to Lapai. Every other person said, we want to go to the capital. And I said, no, I want to go to Lapai. And it was like, are you serious? You know, but God made it in a way that that place was at, in the end better than the capital. You know, I got a very good place of assignment and I worked in a university which was which was more profiting. I had more time to myself. There was a lot of, you know, benefit to that, which I wouldn't have gotten if I had gone to the capital. So sometimes we might be thinking about what we know, what we feel is best in human in human sight. But God knows the end from the beginning. And that is why we should cling to him. So my, my idea to, or my, my thought today or what God has led me to share with you today is hold on to God for wisdom. You cannot and we cannot do it on our own. But God, who knows all things, is the one we should cling to. Cling on to him in obedience this year. Cling on to God in obedience. Say, Lord, I want to follow you like a fool this year. If you say go, I want to go. Like a lamb, I want to follow you like a fool this year. Let the world call me a fool, but I want to follow you. Because I know that you are a wise God. And I cannot follow a wise God and be foolish. I cannot follow a wise God and be foolish. In him dwells the wisdom. The wisdom of the earth is in the hand of God. In, in, the, in, the, in the song we heard in the beginning, it says, Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is what we've come to do. The angels bow every day because when they lift up the 24 elders and the angels, they bow every single time. Because when they lift up their head, they see a different side of God. They are exposed to the wisdom of God day by day. And that's why they keep casting their crowns. They keep bowing. They be, keep they keep coming down in humble adoration to the majesty of this God. And so I want to join in that army to say, Lord, I subscribe to your wisdom. I lose sight of my own wisdom. I hold on to your wisdom. The wisdom as little as praying about your thoughts, praying about what you desire. It might seem minute everybody feels when you need something go and act but the bible says through prayer and supplication let your desires be made known to god and in that little prayer lord i ask that you help me to pass my exam lord i ask that you help me to get to to do well at work today simple prayers that you pray every day go a long way to work more than your effort so my 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 take to you today is hold on to God's word, hold on to his word, and hold on to prayer in this year 2020. In obedience, if God says a thing, hold firm to it. You know, oh, wisdom is believing God for whatever you see. If you see something in the word of God, hold on to it like a fool. If he says, I am excellent, I am excellent. I don't need anybody to tell me my IQ anymore. If he says, I am rich, I am rich. I don't need my account balance to tell me. If he says I am healthy, I am healthy. I don't need a doctor to tell me. It is holding on to God like a fool. And as you do that, your life will not remain the same. He will take you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you begin to say a prayer and say, Lord, help me. Help me to follow you this year like a fool. Let me be a fool before man, but let me be wise before you. May I not be wise before men and be a fool before God in the name of Jesus. May I not be wise before men and be a fool before God. May I be considered wise in the sight of God in the name of Jesus. I pray for the wisdom of God. I pray for the wisdom of God. I pray for the wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. I pray for the wisdom of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the wisdom of God in my life. Let my life be an example. Let my life be an example. In the name of Jesus, blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We lift our hands in humble adoration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I trust that your life will not remain the same. Even as you come to hold on to his word, this broadcast has been brought to you by Dominion City Dublin. And if you have any prayer points, if you want us to join you in prayer, feel free to send an email 
to dominioncitydoublin at gmail.com or you can drop a message on this channel, the YouTube channel or share your testimony. We want to hear as how God is helping you and how your life is turning around for good and I trust that your life will not remain the same. God bless you richly and take good care of yourself. Oh, we've got